Hi. I've been benched for a few days. Not able to get in the game. I think I smell a little gamey too, but that's a different matter. But here I am on the bench. Benches are relaxing. Benches are a comfortable place to be. They're, they're enjoyable. You, you can kick back. You can, you can watch everything that's going around. You can listen to all of the noises going by with the cars and watch the traffic. And you can see stuff at the park, and the construction going on at my favorite restaurant, the Part 2, Mama Carpino's, a block and a half away. All kinds of cool things to do on a bench. Unless you don't want to be on the bench and then it's annoying when I was in in high school my junior year in wrestling I pulled every muscle in my chest in one of the matches I didn't wrestle for a few weeks my senior year the first match I was starting center and I ended up not playing anymore after that game because I ruined my back and I still have effects of that even to this day sitting on the bench watching somebody else do what you're supposed to be doing but sometimes you just have to suck it up and say that's the way it is because we're part of the team the old adage that says there's no I in team so we look at that perspective today as we hear in the scriptures in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Paul is, of course, talking to the Christians in Corinth, and he says, But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food and every every now and even now you are not yet ready for you are still of the flesh for while there is jealousy and strife among you you are not of the flesh and behaving only in human way for when one says i follow paul another i follow apollos are you not being merely human what then is apollos what then is paul servants through whom you believed as the Lord assigned. And Paul says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who makes it so. Paul is saying, hey, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Don't give me any credit at all. Don't give Apollos any credit either. We just did what God told us to do, and then we sit back, and God does the work. But our egos don't always appreciate that, do they? Because we enjoy being in the mix of it all. Being in the game and getting the credit. We love to get the credit for what we have done. Even some of us for what we have not done. I was there that day when they did all of that, so hey, I'm a superhero too, even though I was just watching. I was there. But what God tells us to do is, is to live our lives as servants, to live our lives looking out for one another, serving the Lord, serving our brothers and sisters in the faith. Even if that means we get to be benched now and again. Even if that means somebody else might get some of the glory that we think is meant for us. God probably wouldn't use these words, but sometimes we just need somebody to say, sit down and shut up. Do your job. Don't fuss. Don't stomp your feet. Just do your job. I don't like the New England Patriots, but they are an organization that, that is built around the attitude that says, do your job. Don't think you're the star. You're part of the team. Do your job or you will be benched. 
and their coach isn't afraid of doing those kinds of things or saying those kinds of things. He's kind of a grumpy curmudgeon type fellow anyway, but he knows how to win by getting his players to do their job. Each one of us has been given gifts by God's Holy Spirit to do a variety of things in a variety of ways. My wife is far more technically gifted than I am. I actually have a tendency that when I touch electronics, they tend to kind of get goofy. I can't wear digital watches, it seems, because I, I tend to fry them. Maybe it's just my magnetism, I'm not sure, but that's the way it is. She can handle these things, that's why she is filming all of this stuff, because if I do it, I'll film a picture of my foot and say, well, well that was interesting. But we have our jobs to do, each one of us. And in these COVID situational events that we're finding ourselves in, in the congregations, we gather here for our church parking lot with uh, the praise team inside. Nobody can see the praise team. They're stuck back there. We're all in the parking lot. I'm standing on the sidewalk. And we have the microphones, we have the speakers, we have the radio, and then we have the internet. Each person having a different role in making sure all of that gets done. We've got people on eight foot poles handing out uh, communion sets, not for tomorrow, but for other weeks, little pre-sealed communion bread and wine, and we have them handing out bulletins and collecting offerings. Not a difficult job, but a necessary job. Last Sunday, we had a food drive, so we had people gathering the food, and then somebody else distributed it later on in the week. Each of us doing our job, sometimes sitting on the bench, sometimes getting our hands dirty, sometimes just waiting to see what happens next. But for each one of us, God has given me, has given you, 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 each one of us gifts by his Holy Spirit. Spiritual gifts, spiritual tools that we would use them for his purpose, for his glory. And so look for ways, even in this new world we find ourselves in with the COVID-19 adjustments to life, how can God use you still? Even if it's not the same old, same old that it's been for a thousand years. Or for some of you when you were a kid. Just kidding on that. God still uses you. Surrender. Use him. I'm sorry, let him use you. Because he will. Pray with me, Heavenly Father. We thank you that you bless us and empower us, that you use us for your plan, for your purpose, for your glory, that others would hear, would believe, would be saved, that the weak would be strengthened, that the lost would be found. It's not up to us to gain the glory. It's up to us to do what you call us to do, willingly, eagerly, joyfully. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give to us in new ways now as we reach around the world with the Internet and even in our parking lot. Bless us by the power of your Holy Spirit through your word that indeed you would be glorified and millions more saved because of the blood of Christ. We praise you and we pray all of this for your glory, for the sake of the Christ. Amen. Put me in, coach.